My name's Rob, and I work for, well, I worked for OpenTAN, and now I work for Intel Corporation, and I'm going to be talking about Pocky Linux. So, Pocky is the Pocky Platform Builder. Now, this is a system that allows you to produce uh, images customized for your mobile embedded device. Now, this includes things including the kernel, the set of packages, um, any of those tweaks, compilation, and it supports things like cross-compilation. But we use the term Pocky interchangeably. We also use it to refer to the distribution that's produced. Hang on, actually. Let me just, let me just try starting my demo again, and then whether it goes full screen. That's better. So, yes, a bit of a terminology mix-up here, but we also refer to the, di the distribution that is produced by Pocky as Pocky. Right. So, why do we have Pocky? Pocky is a fork of uh, Open Embedded. It's a fork that the intention was that it uh, supports a small subset of uh, devices, smaller subset packages. OE is like Debian. It has thousands of different um, software and pieces of software available. And, you know, you, if you want to be able to produce something reliably, you're going to need to concentrate on a specific subset. And... Um, at OpenHand, we were developing applications for our clients, and we needed a uh, system which we could regularly um, to, could do our development against that was stable. So, in particular, we were interested in the GNOME embedded platform, in the GNOME mobile stack. And we wanted something that we could release on a regular basis, along with the GNOME mobile uh, releases, which happen every six months, just like the standard GNOME desktop releases. And in fact, Pocky is one of the standard implement, uh, is the sort of reference implementation that the um, GNOME mobile release manager uses to test against, um, to test the release against. Uh, it just so happens that he works for Open Hand Intel, but um, you know, c pure coincidence. So GNOME mobile, um, we had a little bit of coverage of GNOME mobile earlier, but fundamentally it's a, a subset of the GNOME technologies with a few interesting bits added that GNOME hasn't yet accepted. So we've got sort of telepathy, that's sort of getting into the GNOME desktop now. For EDS, we've got EDS Dbus rather than the EDS Orbit. Um, GeoClue, GUPNP, lots of very interesting technologies starting to come in on the desktop, but GNOME mobile was almost there before them. Um, one thing that's not on here is Clutter. Uh, that is sort of starting to enter the uh, the GNOME mobile uh, stack, and in fact, they're at the meeting of the GNOME mobile developers, they were trying to say, well, what defines a GNOME mobile system? Is it a system that uses GTK? But they went, oh, but but what happens if we don't use GTK? What happens if we use Clutter? Is that still GNOME mobile? And they were like, okay, yes. It's fundamentally that if you've got, if you're if you inhabit the area of the world of glibstar libraries, um, dbus, and use a reasonable component of these, these um, systems, then you're mobile. Um, so the fork was originally just for internal use, and then clients started to hear about this and started to say, oh, you've done this development very quickly. We'd really like to share, you know, well, how are you doing this? And so then it became a fully-fledged community product a community project and also commercial product. Um, so, in terms of supported hardware, because it's derived from OE, we got lots of hardware supported for free. But in particular, we concentrated on a large selection of the ARM systems, mostly at the sort of mid to high end, not so um, MX31s, um, TI OMAP systems. Uh, in fact, we, when we did the early work on the, op we did the OpenMoco GTK UI, we actually did all development on Pocky, and, um, which is because that was very similar to the OE that OpenMoco was using, but we could, we could b build it much more quickly in our build systems. Um, and uh, as you'll see later, the, 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 as well as working on uh, systems like uh, you know, PDAs, like the Zowers, we also, it also be used on some more adventurous hardware. So, as well as um, the actual distribution itself, um, Pocky comes with a UI, reference UI implementation called Sato. And this is a Matchbox theme, a uh, GTK theme, a GTK icon set, 
and also um, a, a sort of a sort of style. And this is a reference implementation. And when I show you the uh, uh, screen, screenshots in a minute, you'll see it's very clean, very simple. It's deliberately this in simple, with because of the intention that we want um, we want wanted our clients to say, "Oh, look at this! Look how simple and clean this is. We can just adapt it and, and make it, you know, more more powerful." Um, and this was all done, um, but, th but Sato is, is not limited to Pocky only. It's just a standard set of GTK, you know, matchbox themes. So, Pimlico. Pimlico was, uh, is the, a PIM suite that is developed based on EDS, D and in fact EDS Dbus. And there's no point in having a, a distribution tailored for mobile devices if you don't have any applications that are also tailored for those, tailored for those mobile devices. So, the Pimlico apps are a set of very simple tasks, contacts, dates, which are designed to work perfectly well on the embedded systems, but also I actually use tasks and date on, on my day-to-day -day life on my uh, laptop. Um, so, no, we wanted to have a set, set of applications that are available in Pocky. Um, all these projects were, been, were developed uh, as sort of side projects during the development of of Pocky, uh, but, but, but all of the things were actually developed on spare time. None of this was client work, so they're all very much uh, open source and, uh, and freely contributable. So, well, but if I'm, a, if I'm a developer targeting mobile systems, I want to be able to, you know, do my testing on my machine. I don't want to have to, you know, SSH into a slow, slower ARM machine, or I want to, I don't, I, you know, maybe the hardware's not ready yet. This, so QEMU provides a fantastic emulation system which emulates the, the hardware. And we have an a, a engineer who, when you give him a set of specifications, he will produce a accurate um, QEMU emulator for a particular hard piece of hardware. Zaurus and OpenMoco. Uh, an Atom the system uh, and, the, and an A10. Um, all these systems have got um, to an accurate in terms of what kind of devices. I remember how frustrated I was with the OpenMoco emulation he did because it only had the two buttons. You could push space or um, uh, escape, I think, and that would em emulate the two buttons that were on the OpenMoco. And I'm like, oh, yes, yes, that's perfect. Oh, too good, too good. Um, so, em emulation is incredibly important um, and during the, for the development of uh, and use of Pocky. So I'm just gonna gonna sort of fast forward through to my demo of QMU, but I'm also actually gonna demo my uh, my next thing. So if I just don't look what's on the screen, I'm just gonna do this. Just uh, oh. I think I'm So here I'm starting QMU. This is uh, this is QMU x86. Um, so whilst I'm whilst this is booting up, I'll talk about how, uh, as well as supporting ARM-based systems, Pocky is also can also works perfectly well on um, embedded systems, and we have uh, lots of stuff in there which is now for uh, netbooks and uh, some of the uh, modeling components that are also present in Pocky. And um, so. In general, um, Pocky is um, an incredibly powerful tool, and the, it's very difficult to, in general to try and explain to people how it works. So I'm, I'm going to just try and talk to you about how I would use it, and in particular, the SDK integration. So Pocky, is, you know, if you can, if you build, use Pocky to build an image for a device, that can require gigs and gigs of disk space, because it downloads all the software, builds builds a compiler to build the compiler, that then builds the software. Yeah, that's right. So you have an intermediate, and then you have your cross, and then you actually build it. And of course, it will actually build a non-cross, so you can actually have the compiler inside the image as well. Um, very useful, but mm, it's kind of big, several, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gigabytes. It's quite significant, but for the SDK, we actually can produce a tarball, which you can, ha which includes uh, the cross compiler, 
or, and then a set of all the libraries that match those on the device, including the headers and also the debug information. So you can use this, which is only a 200 meg tarball, and extract that to have all, your, um, to have all the, the tools you need to develop on. So hopefully QME will be booted now. Yes. No. Well, yes, but it's black. Ah, oh, no, here it is. Yeah, I'm fantastic. So, so here is the uh, here's Sato. Is this this is the icon theme for Sato? Um, and here are the Pimlico applications I was talking about. And uh, this is emulated. Oh, that's going to start two copies actually. Mm. But all, everything here is is is, st is fairly standard GNOME, comp uh, GNOME and GTK components. So this is, this is a, just a GTK application, but the theming, this, uh, the, the Sato engine theme is draw, draws things that are using uh, the X primitive, so it's quite nice and fast. Um, and it says 1970, yeah, that's good. Um, this, this, the network application is actually Network Manager. Uh, this, is a, this is Matchbox, this is Matchbox desktop. Um, the web browser is based on WebKit. The video player uses GStreamer. The music player uses GStreamer. These applications just use EDS. So if actually, if you're looking for an interesting, uh, a, a very simple application to, uh, to use as a, uh, to learn how to program for EDS or for, uh, for GStreamer or, or, or WebKit, these aren't bad examples. Uh, but everything is sort of standardized. It's just using the standard. Window here is nothing, nothing too fancy. But it's still a mobile solution. So what I was talking to about the SDK. So. Here, I'm look, I'm, I, I, I did some work for uh, IREX Technologies, who are using Pocky on, uh, on, on, on an embedded device. And um, they were like, yeah, it's really, really good. But, um, you know, as our developers, they're not, you know, not all our developers are into Vim or, or Emacs. Do you think you can help them a little bit? So this is Anjuta, which is the a GNOME, GTK, a GNOME um, uh, integrated development environment that is an official part of the GNOME 224. Um, and here I have opened the tasks source code. So I'm actually just going to uh, build this using the uh, comp compilation settings, which I'll just show you. Are do do do. Let me use my mouse. Um. No, actually, that's crashed. No, it hasn't. Hmm. Okay, right, that's not responding. Okay, right, <coughs> if you just give me a minute, if I click, oh, oh there you go, there's tasks. Um, let's just see what's gone wrong here. <sighs> Demos always work perfectly the first time, don't they? Oh, oh, maybe, oh, I'll tell you what it was looking for. It was probably looking for a password somewhere. Let's try that again. Starting QMU. Um, so the way that an SDK works is that we have a cross compiler. And it then points it, you have a directory inside user local, which has your the header files that match those on your system, has the um, debug information that gets stripped out of the binaries that we put onto the system for space, but it's still there. So you can um, be, be able to build uh, your program. And if it's an auto-tooled piece of project, it's really easy. You can just do uh, set up a few environment variables. In fact, there's a script in the uh, in the in the um, SDK that sets these environment variables for you, tells it where to find the package config files that that's for your system, uh, and, and sets the uh, host for the uh, the host type for the cross compiler. Goes ahead, and then it just goes. Oh yeah, no, you don't want to use slash user bin GCC. You want you know user local pocky um or in or x86 or dash pocky dash all slash user bin slash arm um, linux pocky gcc or whatever and it's just like okay good i'm glad i didn't have to type that in myself so 
let's try this again. So, if I build configure project, so this should now do exactly what I'm saying in terms of passing the parameter along to say that what what uh, compilation completed unsuccessful. <sighs> AC local flags, that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, on my blog you can find a video of this working. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe try and kind of get back to it a little bit later. So, so uh, as I mentioned, as well as being a sort of community project and an internal project, um, Pocky has also been used on a few commercial systems. Um, the most interesting of which is the Vernier LabQuest. And this is a photo that was taken in, in our office uh, on top of my copy of The Guardian. Um, and this is not actually what it is on the screen. This is just the label. I didn't realize this until um, the promotional label they'd stuck over. But um, <laughs> I assure you, it can produce graphs that look like that. Okay? Um, and so this is, a, this is a device that is used for, which is based on an ARM V and it's exactly the same hardware as you find in a Zaris PDA, uh, except it's in a slightly different form factor. It's designed to be taken into the classroom. You can uh, plug in an array of sensors, uh, which are just USB devices, and then start up this, map, uh, this plotting software and then record various things. So, for instance, it has a, a, col uh, a calorometer, a colorometer, um, a um, pressure sensors, temperatures, so you can hold it, you can collect, take multiple sets of input, you can then take it onto your PC, link it up against your PC, um, and it also has a periodic table, lots of these things that are designed, and it's in this ruggedized form factor. Um, so th this is an example of a, a very small company who were able to get up a device up and running using a uh, Pocky that was uh, pretty cool, and these these devices have sold you know thousands of things, and hopefully you know better a bit better than the BBC Micro I used at school for plotting these kind of things. But uh, yeah, so but as well as um, as well as uh, commercial users, uh, the it has a very active community. Um, Pocky is used by is being used by increasing in numbers of um, uh, organisations outside of you know, project, pro projects and products for, 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 for open hand. Uh, and so including, as well as the, uh, there's all the usual types of communication methods, including an IRC, a main list, and a website. Um, so the little chap that you saw here is the, is the Pocky Beaver. And I have a few of these that I forgot to bring with me the, today. But uh, if you come and find me tomorrow, I can, I can give you one. Um, so, I have some backup slides, which, which were delivered at the end because they could take a large amount of time to talk about, but these are very technical. So, um, the, the way that an image is actually built is by using a tool called, or, or an image, or the packages, is by using a tool called BitBake. Now, BitBake follows a recipe learn how to build things and in fact if you go through the source code there's something called the oven and it takes the recipe and then it cooks it and oh, yes very good but um, it's it, it's a massive tool it will t it, it, it can as well build in the actual packages it can build the uh, images from the packages and so it's incredibly powerful it's written in Python and you need, I, I, you know, I use it as an excuse to get some more RAM for my laptop but, you know, the idea is that you can have this running on your build system, and when you give your end developers, you just give them the tarball, the SDK. You don't have to actually use this. You can actually have a centralized build system. And it's much, much more rapid for getting things going. So, uh, Pocky itself has, has about 1,000 recipes for different types of um, for different pieces of software. Um, and I'll just show you an example of a recipe. So yeah, this is the this is the, the tasks recipe for the t 
task management program. I'm showing you the, not task management, the EDS, you know, what I have to do today program. And um, it's kind of short. So this is, this is the one for our version. And it automatically pulls out the version of the package from the name in the file. Um, here is where to find it. Here's the patch that makes the configure work properly, probably. Uh, and this is a, a, you know, these are the patches to apply. And this is the, uh, the generic one. So we can, so we, if, we, if we have tasks, you know, 14, we can just inherit or, you know, include the previous one, which just says, oh yeah, the name of the application, the licenses and uh, the binary dependencies. And these interesting things here where it says inherit, those are, th those are classes. Those, those are what, you know, you have to, you can tell it basically how to do your packaging for you. So you don't even have to you know, think about it. Oh, yeah, this is an auto tools application. Therefore, you call auto gen, then configure, then make it. But these are the types of things you need to pass into or oh, configure to make it work with, the, with, a, in the, with a cross environment. Oh, yeah, it uses package config. You know, make sure all this thing's set up. Kind of a little bit smaller than a Debian uh, packaging format or a spec field, but mostly because we don't like typing too much. So we just, we just say, you know, yeah, it's one of this type of thing, it's this type of thing. But Categorizing these types of um, metadata, it makes it so much easier. Oh, I've got another, you know, standard GNOME GTK application. Oh, I can just inherit the, you know, these usual things. And that inheritance is what classes are all about. So classes are things like, oh yeah, this is a, this is a standard GNOME application. You need to run. You need to make sure you depend on GNOME common, so you don't have to. So you've got the GNOME autogen script, so you don't have to. To uh, you know, remember to call the right autogen, or remember to set all the depends properly. Uh, properly. So when when it builds packages, uh, Pocky can build packages which are in this uh, OPK or IPK O package I package format, which is a you know a, a packaging system designed designed for embedded systems. But it can also build DEBs and RPMs. So it takes this the metadata from the recipe applies a bunch of manipulations and extractions and remembers what it has to do to set up the dependencies for the various different um, styles of package management and then spit out DEBs, RPMs, IPACs. Um, so it's kind of very flexible in terms of if you want to build a system which is compatible with you know, LSB specification, you're going to need to make sure you can support uh, RPMs. So as well as the classes for influencing how a recipe behaves. There are also machine configurations. And as I said before, the Pocky supports a very large number of machines, and the machine specifies how to build the kernel. Well, which kernel to use? Which architectures does this support? Does it support ARMv4, ARMv5, ARMv6, so that you can then have something that is compatible, you know, that you use the best thing available. So for a lot of things, we're quite happy to build for ARM v5, but for a few other components, we might want to, you know, accelerate a GStream and Codex. We might want to build it for ARM v, ARM v, ARM v, so for, um, ARM v6. So, as well as those specifying the architectures, it also specifies um, how to build the, the type of file system. Where is it JFS2? Is it EXT2? Um, you know, you don't actually have to, rem you don't have to, you know, do all that work for you. You don't have to set up all the command lines. We've already done that. So you just say, oh, yeah, it's a, it's, you just build an XT2 file system. So if I showed you an example of a machine config. Here's the QMX. This is for the QMU. And I said, oh, yeah, well, it's a BZ image here. So can you just build that for me? Oh, yeah, serial report, yeah. It's 11.5.200 TTYS there, yeah. Kernel to use. Um, Oh yeah, and the architectures i586, machine features x86. So, oh, and here, another example of, of including the file. Oh look, you use conf machine, include QME, and this sets up a bunch of properties for how you should build QME based systems. Um, and, yes, uh, what else is this one? So, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything covered in terms of the internals. I can, I can spend even longer talking about those if you wish, but are there any questions that are at a high level? Or shall I try and make my demo work again? Where is a good place to learn that? Learn the internals? No, no, no. How to get started with it and using it. 
Okay, so if you go to Pocky Linux Dog, you can download um, an image for the uh, QME image, and you can also download the QME package, and just run QMU. There's a, there'll be a, there's a script that just sets up all the parameters that you need to run. Boom, and it'll start up. We have SDK images, which also include the tool chain, SSH, so you can log in and start doing your, your uh, building. Um, one, one way that, that, that we find that works best for us is we tend to do all our development actually on the desktop and we move our development closer to the, um, to the, to the, the, the metal that we're going to use at, at the later stage as possible. So all those uh, Pimlico applications, they were built in a modular way so that only in the last segment do you have to think, oh, okay, yeah, I need to make customizations for the OpenMoco port. Okay, you know, and that's just the last 5% of the work. So there's lots of, you know, subclassing of the of the GTK widgets and, and all these kind of things, just so you can build a bolt-on, a, a, you know, a c componentized uh, way of building your applications. So now that OpenM has been acquired by Intel, mm -hmm. how much of the ARM stuff is going to stay being supported in Pokey? Is that going to be left to the community, or is uh, you guys going to be able to do something like that? Uh, yeah. So. Um, that's a very valid point. Um, so yes, the community is still continuing to support Pocky. We, uh, Intel is supporting Pocky and has uh, some engineers working on it a, a bit. Not full time, but they do have engineers who are contributing. So yes, community project. We're continuing with the um, providing the infrastructure to keep it running. It's not going away. Uh, and it's actually reached the point of maturity where it doesn't matter so much that there's no longer uh, open hand driving it directly because there are so many, the mailing lists are very active. We can almost just step away and say, here you go guys, carry on, which is good. So the related question would be, is Intel going to be using Pocky Linux for the sort of uh, mid stuff that is happening inside Intel? Uh, is it MIMO and, and that kind of stuff? Uh, not, we're not using Pocky right now for, for building our systems, but uh, you know, it's a, fundamentally it's a research project and it's being still considered as a research project. I, mean, I think that'd be nice. But. Any other questions? Or? All good? Okay, thank you.